Hello, everybody. Or two four dash one three seven or two. Appearances from council. Joanna Carey, Chief Assistant Prosecuting Attorney for the People. And I'm Jeff Harrison. I'm here on behalf of Franklin. I pronounce his name Zygo Jr. Uh, we'll, we'll find out how he wants to be called. Sir, how do we pronounce your last name? Zigo. Zigo. Thank you, sir. Zigo. Mr. Zigo joins us today via Zoom from the Washburn County Jail. And we'll obviously we just uh, determine that he can see and hear us. Now we're here today for a pre-trial conference. That was conducted briefly in chambers between myself and counsel. Actually, it was uh, Mr. Harrison only who came in and told me what the parties intended to do. Uh, the defendant, I'm sorry, the counsel told me that there might be a no contest plea. And I did receive a copy of a police report, specifically a Wexford County Sheriff's Department report with an incident number of 83-230-2757. Now, I'm, thank you, Madam Clerk, who is a report reporter. She's given me an exhibit sticker, and I've placed that exhibit sticker on there, and it says People's Exhibit Number One. Before I, I even talk about the exhibit, uh, Ms. K, why don't you guys tell me what you think you will, what we think we're going to do? It's my understanding, Your Honor, that the defendant will plead guilty to count three assault resistant threat to police officer as an habitual offender second and an added count four false report of a misdemeanor. The people will dismiss counts one, two, and the habitual offender fourth notice. What was that added count four again? False report of a misdemeanor. One second, Mr. Harrison. Indeed, Your Honor, that comports with my understanding. The only tweak I would put on that was that it would be a contest plea. That's, that's where I think we're going to have an issue, but one moment. Okay. I first want to find uh, the code. So we're looking here at MCL 750.411, and I assume it's going to be alpha, and it looks like it is alpha 1 which is a misdemeanor possible by up to 93 days and or $500 in fines. Thank you. All right, now let's get to the heart of the matter today. And that is the request to allow the defendant to enter a no contest plea. The first reason for entering a no contest plea that I will look at is intoxication but in my review of plaintiff's i'm sorry people's exhibit number one i didn't see any issue of intoxication that then takes me to the next issue of potential civil liability um i didn't read it i don't know what it, i don't see anything in there and so mr harrison why don't you tell me why the court could or should accept a no contest plea. Indeed, the facts which underlie the added count that we just discussed in the original count, which was a uh, false report of a felony, involved some allegations with regard to its parents and that they had been brandished a weapon and were threatening, threatening him with it. But he's not pleading to anything involving. I mean, there's I don't see any civil liability there. I, they didn't get arrested, they didn't get hurt, they did nothing happen to them. So I don't see any civil liability. So I was thinking of the potential, and I guess your yeah. point is that that would be down the road. I don't However, but no, but I don't I don't even see how anybody would file a lawsuit for civil liability. So I don't think I can use civil liability well he overall the conceptualization that i had your honor was that mr i'm going to say zygo because I, I don't want to mess up my train of thought has expressed a lack of memory in the past that may or may not be the case today and i suppose we ought to proceed on that basis well the challenge that i have here is what i've read in the report 
gives me significant, sufficient and significant concern for the defendant's mental health as to whether or not he is either competent to stand trial or should be considered for basically the insanity defense. In other words, that he was incapacitated at the time mentally. Mr. Zygo. Yes, sir. I told today, Ms. Carey says you're going to, the prosecutor says you're going to plead guilty. Mr. Harrison wants me to accept what's called a no contest plea, where you would not have to make an admission as to what happened. I am not going to allow a no contest plea. I will only accept a guilty plea, which means it would require you to state what you did and why you did it. Now, I'm also going to note that I see in this report some information that allows me to be quite concerned about your mental health, and I do so respectfully. There are rules and constitutional rights that make me have to potentially raise this issue, which does not need to be raised by either the prosecutor or the defendant, the defense counsel. It can be raised by the court. Mr. Zisco, or Zygo, sorry, or Zigo, do you understand what the what you're charged with? I understand what the original charge is, but I just don't understand what the whole play agreement is currently, Your Honor. Okay, well, I'm going to go over that. We're going to see if throughout this discussion, I find there any there to be any reason to set this matter for a competency evaluation and further evaluation. Mr. Zigo, you are currently charged with three counts. Count one is a charge of false report of a felony which means allegedly you called the 911 operator and reported a felony crime. Now that is possible by up to four years and or up to $2,000. I'm told that you'll plead guilty to, instead of that count, a lesser charge called false report of a misdemeanor. Yeah, they typically frown upon that. Which basically is the same thing, but instead of calling 911 and saying, hey, I'm the victim of or I've seen or witnessed a felony crime, we would take it as a misdemeanor. Now, that would include a maximum punishment of up to 93 days and or up to $500. For me to accept a plea to that lesser charge, you would have to be able to say that you called 911 and knowingly reported falsely a crime. Count two is a charge of assault with a dangerous weapon, also known as felonious assault. That is a felony punishable by up to four years and or up to $2,000. I'm told that that charge would be dismissed. You're also charged with the third count of assault, resist, or obstruct a police officer. That is a felony punishable by up to two years and or up to $2,000. I'm told that you're going to plead guilty to that. In other words, you would have to admit to failing to follow the instructions or trying to assault or assaulting a police officer when they came to your home on this date. This date again was December 15th of 2023. Now there's also something called a fourth habitual felony enhancement, which means if you were found guilty of that of any of these felonies, the sentence could be increased. For instance, if you were found guilty of the false report of the felony, which is the four year offense, that could be increased to 15 years. If you're found guilty of count two, which is the assault with a dangerous weapon, that could be increased from four up to 15 years. For the assault with the, uh, or, or failing to file the instruction of the police officer, that could be also increased up to 15 years, but that enhancement will be dismissed. So what I understand is you're gonna plead guilty today to false report of a misdemeanor. In other words, you called 911 and made a false report of a crime occurring and to assault, resist, or obstruct a police officer, which means you fail to follow their orders when they came to the house. Now, because I've been presented this exhibit earlier, I understand that the allegation is that you uh, may have threatened a police officer with a firearm, 
or you fail to follow their instructions as they open the door and try to talk you through the be the bedroom door. Is that what you think you're doing today, Mr. Uh, Zigo? After I spent some time detoxing while I was in here and went over the police report myself that I was given, I had realized that, yes, Your Honor, I was guilty of those crimes. However, I did not have a firearm that night. I was intoxicated. Um, I had been drinking whiskey and smoking marijuana that was possibly laced. However, I am willing to work with CMH and get my bipolar intact and learn to abide by the law. My question is, will I ever be able to get these things expunged so I can become, right. so I can have a job that is, you know, it makes it hard well, for people being felons to be productive members of society and that, like, I had no problem admitting my guilt. I admit I was in the wrong. I accept okay, that. Hold on. Yep, time out, time out. You covered two really important points in your discussion. So I'm going to go over those one at a time. The first one is now the court may be willing to consider a no contest plea if the prosecution doesn't object because you described that you were under the influence of controlled substances and so forth, yes, sir. which means I could then look at a police report and I, as long as the prosecutor would agree. Would you agree, Madam Prosecutor? I would. All right. That was step one. Step two or point two that you mentioned was you asked about expungements. We also call them set asides. I cannot tell you if you would have it set, set aside. The law on expungements has changed a lot over the last six years and it seems to continuously change. So I can't tell you what it's going to say in the future. And I also can't give you advice and don't want to tell you anything that you could take as advice. Whether or not you qualify for expunging these or if they were convictions or any prior convictions depends upon your eligibility and whatever court you apply. For instance, if you have prior convictions such as these that I see here, one of them deals with, or two of them in your felony history, deal with OWASO. You would have to go to that court and apply. Now, there are certain restrictions on whether or not one is eligible. For instance, you can only seek expungement on a limited number of felonies, as well as a limited number of misdemeanors. And it may not apply to all crimes. So I cannot tell you whether or not you would have the right to have any offenses expunged. It's not my job and I, it would be wrong for me to do so. So now the question that I have for you is, do you still wish to enter now? I will accept a no contest plea as in those two counts. Is that what you would like to do, Mr. Zisco? Yes, Your Honor. And I'm sorry, I keep mispronouncing it, Mr. Zygo. Mr. Zygo, Zigo. Zigo, please, Zigo. Zigo, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm going to get it right. Please raise no your right hand, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, do you swear or affirm that the information and testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir? Yes, sir. You may lower your hand. Mr. Zigo, looking back to the date of December 15th, 2023. Were you on probation or parole to any county or state at that time? Not to my recollection, Your Honor, no. Were you on bond pending any other felony allegations at that time? Not to my understanding, Your Honor, no. Thank you. Uh, by entering a plea of no contest today, the court will be looking at something such as a police report. Do you understand? Yes, sir. The entrance of a no contest plea has the same impact as a guilty plea. The difference is instead of requiring you to recite a factual basis, the court will look at something such as that exhibit I mentioned a while ago to base the plea on. If your plea is accepted, you will be given up certain rights that you have at a trial. 
Now that includes the right to be tried by a jury, the right to be tried without a jury if you chose and the court and prosecutor consented, the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty, the right to have the prosecutor prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you are guilty, the right to have the witnesses against you appear at the trial, the right to question and cross-examine those witnesses against you, the right to have the court order any witnesses you may have for defense to appear at the trial, the right to remain silent during the trial, the right to not have it silence used against you, and the right to testify yourself at the trial if you chose to testify. Mr. Zigo, do you understand those rights? Yes, Your Honor. My wish is to hear just to enter a guilty plea instead of pleading the fifth and just get it over with. I'll accept whatever plea you offer me today. That way we don't have to go to trial. I'd rather just let's, do it with that. It's okay. it's okay. So let's go back. So I have to ask these questions, and it might you might want to get through them quickly, but if I don't go through them, then some appellate judge is going to be upset at me and say, Judge, you didn't do the right thing. So just bear with I'm me. I'm just trying to avoid the whole trial thing. That's what I'm trying to do. Like, I, I would rather get this over with today, whatever it takes, plead the fifth or okay. plead guilty. I, I plead. Yeah, so. All right. We're going to get there. Just hold on. Do you waive those rights that I just mentioned a moment ago? What rights? I don't right. remember. Okay. You have certain rights that if you enter a no contest plea, you'd be given up. And I need you to tell me if you're gonna give these up. I'm gonna list them for you. There are 10. The right to have a jury by a trial by jury, the right to be tried without a jury if you chose the court and prosecutor consented, the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty, the right to have the prosecutor prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you are guilty, the right to have the witnesses against you appear at the trial, the right to remain silent during that trial, uh, the right to have the court order any witnesses you may have for defense to appear at the trial, the right to not have your silence used against you, the right to testify yourself at the trial if you chose to testify. Are you willing to waive those rights today, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Additionally, any appeal from the conviction sentence pursuant to the plea will be by filing an application for leave to appeal and not a claim of appeal by right. Furthermore, by pleading guilty, you may be given up the right to appeal issues that would otherwise only be appealable if you were convicted at a trial. Additionally, if the plea is accepted, you will be given up the claim that the plea was a result of any promises, threats, or inducements not told to the court today on the record, or the plea was not of your own free choice. Mr. Zigo, are you entering this plea of your own free choice? Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Harrison has probably done a brilliant job and described to you the Michigan sentencing guidelines and the potential sentencing. My question for you is, has he or anyone promised or told you what the sentence exactly would be from this court? No, sir. Knowing all that, do you still wish to enter the pleas of no contest, as, this, as we discussed earlier? Yes, Your Honor. As to count three, assault, resist, obstruct a police officer, how do you plead? Again, I anticipate your plea to be no contest. That's correct. I, I need you to say no contest. No contest. Thank you. As to added count four, false report of a misdemeanor, how do you plead? No contest, Your Honor. Thank you. The court has pe people's exhibit number one in its hand. Ms. Carey, you asked the court to accept that exhibit. I am. Mr. Harrison, any objection? No, without reservation. People's exhibit number one is hereby admitted. Again, as I've mentioned on the record, the court reviewed it prior to taking the stand based upon the information stated to me by Mr. Harrison. Ms. Carey, do you believe that the uh, packet, I'm sorry, the evidence demonstrates uh, the elements, of course, the elements for the pleas is provided? I do. Mr. Harrison, do you agree? I do, sir. Ms. Carey, are you aware of any other promises, threats, inducements? I'm not. Mr. Harrison, how about you? No, am I. Ms. Carey, do you believe the court is in compliance with Mission Parole 6.302? Yes, sir. Mr. Harrison? Indeed. Thank you. The court agrees and finds the defendant's pleas today are made freely, knowingly, and voluntarily. The court further finds that the information contained in plaintiff's exhibit number one satisfies the elements for those uh, offenses and count three and added count four. Specifically, there is adequate information contained on pages one and two of four that appear on the primary narrative of the <laughs> And specifically, there's information from uh, the law enforcement officers, as well as those uh, at the home of Mr. Zygo, which again was located here within the uh, city of Cadillac, where he was apparently staying at the time. 
Now, one moment. I said Cadillac, it's actually the Liberty Township in Washford County, which is up north of Cadillac between it and Manton. And it probably has a Manton address. The court finds that the interests of justice do not require the defendant to recite a factual basis based upon the level of intoxication and involvement of controlled substances at the time. The court further finds that the defendant uh, is guilty of count three and added count four. Uh, the other counts in the fourth habitual offender enhancement. Oh, wait. Shoot. Because I thought we were on a roll. I, I forgot I one thing. Reluctant to interrupt you. It's okay. Next time, do it. Mr. Zygo, there was something that I, I failed to cover with you. I told okay. you that you yeah, I told that there was it told you that there was a fourth habitual felony enhancement. I told today that you're entering this plea as a second habitual felony enhancement. Now that means that on the felony charge, which is the count three, the assault resists destructive police officer, it means the sentence could be increased from two years to three years. Now you're probably not really looking at two years or three years based upon the guidelines, but I need to need you to understand that you would be admitting to being a second habitual felony offender. Do you understand, Mr. Zigo or Zigo? Yes, sir. And as to being a second habitual felony offender, I need you to tell me, is it true that on or about March 30th, 2021, you were convicted in this court for larceny in a building? I don't know, Your Honor. I can't remember that. All right. Uh, Mr. Harrison, does the defense stipulate to the criminal history that's listed on the felony information underneath the fourth habitual offender notice? I We absolutely do. Any but, objection to that, Ms. Carey? No, sir. He's at least honest about things. He doesn't remember. He's also been honest as to why he doesn't remember. Now uh, we'll accept that. Therefore, the defendant's found guilty of the second habitual felony offender. Again, counts one and two and the fourth habitual felony offender enhancement will be dismissed at the time of sentencing. Mr. Zigo, the case will now be set for sentencing. That will take place in about four weeks on a Monday morning. Between now and then, a pre-sentence investigation report must be prepared. It must be prepared by an agent of the Michigan Department of Corrections, also known as the Probation and Parole Office. You will receive a packet of information that you will complete and turn back into their office. You will be subject to an interview from an agent of that department. This report will include a description of the fence, description of the pretrial agreement, any statements or information you make or provide, as well as information about any prior criminal history you may have. It will also include a recommendation as a sentence and a scoring in the Michigan Sentencing Guidelines. Again, I highlight it as merely a recommendation as it is the court that determines the sentence. Do you understand, Mr. Zigo? Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Gary? Yes, sir. Mr. Harrison? I have nothing further for the record, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Bond continues this group C set by this court. Mr. Zigo, we are done. If you have any other questions, particularly those about expungements or set asides, please direct those to your attorney. Thank you for your time. We are adjourned. Thank you. Be safe, be well, sleep sweet, and much love.